Hello you multi malt moment millennials. Well, it's one of my own malt mentions and why not? Because this is Ralphie Review 1000. It's a four-parter and it's on location because I have returned to Springbank. Springbank as you stalwart Ralphie fans know was the first distillery that I did a extensive tour through back in 2010 and here we are virtually 14 years later I've popped back but I tell you what there's been a few new faces at the distillery since I was last here and I, I like to introduce Finlay. Um, Finlay how long have you been working at Springbank Distillery? Uh, I've been here for nearly eight years it'll be eight years next month. Right too and what's your job? Uh, I am the production director so normally that means overseeing all production operations uh, right, so. on site. Yeah and uh, that's quite a complex balancing act isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's a difficult one because you've got a very old traditional distillery but there's yeah. obviously still a lot of maintenance and nothing stands still you've got to move forward as well so it's finding that nice yeah. balancing act. And, and what do you find to be the most interesting and rewarding component of the job that you do? Uh, the most rewarding part really is seeing that final product out there. So yeah. we are looking at building recipes and assessing casts and putting a lot of work into that and you're really putting out the product of you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. The point where you see that whiskey go out there and hopefully the reviews are good, that is the, the absolute peak. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, I've got to ask this because hey, it's a Ralphie video. And tell me Finlay, what pisses you off about the job the most? Um, there's been a few things that actually piss me off completely, but right. I think just given how old the distillery is, there's always issues with things breaking down and needing right. replaced, and you're kind of restricted into what you can do in terms of that. So yeah, yeah. that kind of a side of it. Is it? So almost the, the comparison would be that it's like someone living in a modern built house compared to the running repairs on an old stone castle. Yeah, yeah, aye, that kind of thing. You know, the things that make this place great are also old <laughs> most of the time, and, yeah. and they are the things that are most prone to failure or needing maintenance. So, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a balancing act. It all contributes to making the product what it is, but it does give me a few grey hairs as well. Yes, and as you mentioned, there's an awful lot to be dealing with because here at Springbank, everything, and I mean everything, is done in house, and we're sitting in front. Of, would you like to introduce this? This uh, it's, it's not operating at the moment, thank goodness, because we'd be getting scorched. Um, <laughs> but you've got a bit of newspaper there and a few bits of um, of wood just to get things going. And then, of course, we have got this, the peat, right, Joe. Um, in your opinion, why is it so important to be kilning in the distillery? using your own peat. When I say your own peat, obviously it's commercial peat. Yeah. But this gives you complete control over the process. I think that's it. Everything that we do here is built around having complete control over everything. So that's from the malting right the way through to when we bottle the product. Mm -hmm. And so the very first part where we're making our own malt, we've got control over um, the peating levels, how long we run things for, and we've got complete oversight in terms of the quality of mm -hmm. the, the malt that comes out there. And so it's just another part of us having oversight over everything that helps us to make the product the way we want to make it. Yeah. And there's something I want to bring to the malt mate's attention here, and that is, here's a good wee little example. You see that the peat is rounded. Okay, I'm holding it right up in the, in the focus viewer. Um, this is, ethically sourced peat which is not disrupting and damaging the living surface of the peat bog. So if you imagine a farmer's plough, right, where the ploughing is not happening on the surface but it is happening subterranean, about eight inches down, it means that it is far easier for the peat bog to recover because its green living surface is intact. So I must commend you for that. That's very environmental. Yeah, it's one of the hottest topics in, in whiskey at the moment, I would say, is the sustainability of peat. So it's something that we're keen to engage with. And, and as you say, you don't want to be causing any issues if you can help it. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Finlay. I um, appreciated a little interview. By the way, just to let you know, this is, this is one of four parts, right? So I'm not shortchanging you here, Malt Mace, just so you understand that. But uh, thank you, Finlay. I've got my, I don't have a Clivey clicker with me. 
<laughs> what I have is my little mini stealth clicker. Ooh, do you think it's going to work, Finley? I hope so. Do you think it'll work? Yeah. 